Hey, good afternoon. How are we doing today? Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read that from there. I don't have a great spot on my phone in this combine yet. First things first, can everybody hear me okay? Is there anybody even there? What do we got? One. We got one. I'm going to wait a little bit, see if anybody else joins. I got two likes and one viewer. Oh, now I got three. Okay. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Hopefully you can. Hopefully some more people join. We're showing court this afternoon, so that's fun. I've been watching my cell phone service in this field to make sure that I have good enough service to actually do a live stream. And um, it says that I have service here. It'll probably change now, but uh, sound is good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. So, how is everybody today and what do you want to know? How's it going, sir? Well, today is going pretty well. Uh, we're shelling corn. I would rather be combining beans, but our bean fields are still very wet. So, we're on a cornfield that's not as wet, well tiled. And, uh, we had about 70 acres here when we started to finish in this field. Uh, we've got about 34 done. So, we're about half done with it, and it's only 1 o'clock. That's good. That means we'll be done by 4 or 5, probably. Let's go somewhere else. I, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do when we're done with this one. Anyway, let's see. What do we got? Carly, welcome. Glad you guys can join. Uh, either you're buffering or I am. I haven't worked on my fly. Well, that's probably me. this field last year and all the tile lines have settled in so every time I bounce over one it's, it's only in the back half once we get to the front half it's not so bad we're almost there there's our green card turn you guys a little bit there you go. Kind of, kind of, kind of see. we'll get some shaver shots in a little bit from Northeast Ohio. Have you, ever, have you been able to fertilize for next year's crop or are you waiting until spring? So we are getting fertilizer put on this fall. Uh, we have a little bit of it done already, but we were kind of waiting for things to dry up a little bit. I called our uh, fertilizer salesman this morning, the people that do our spreading for us, and told them uh, to go do a list of fields, basically everything that we had ready. So they are uh, supposed to be working on that today and he said oh good it'll give us something to do today which means they probably weren't doing a whole lot anyway so it should be getting done so yes the fertilizer is being spread uh, my dad is actually doing some right now uh, working some corn stalks with the ripper so that is good and uh, we're, we're getting something done it is drying up some but it's still very wet Virginia, Tennessee, in a giant year, 9,500 with a six-row head, harvesting corn was my favorite job. 
Nice. We used to have a 9600. Oh, no, we had a 9500. Yeah, 9500, 9510 with a six-row head. We've done that. Hi, Brock. Brock, everybody's saying hi to you. Are you watching? He's watching. Brock, go to channel 20. Good. Tell everybody hi, Brock. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the live stream. Can you guys hear him? He's on the radio. I'll turn it up next time. Where's Brock's boss? Uh, Brock's boss had school today. I guess he's out of school, so he's at the babysitter now. Looks like you're flying. How fast are you going? Uh, five and a half, five point seven. It says right now. Yeah, we're moving. So you'll notice that we're unloading even though the auger, the grain tank here is basically empty. Uh, if I'm not empty when I get to this end of the field, it's, it can't make it back to the other end of the field very well. So we just kind of leave it on until we get towards the front here. All right now, we'll go and dump that in the truck. Watch close while I turn here. Truck, we turn around and go back. stretch of weather the last three days here since Monday. It's been sunny and pretty warm and just beautiful. Uh, the ground was just so wet from all the rain we've had. It's been a struggle to figure out where to go and how to get stuff done. If you watch this morning's video, you'll know that at the end of yesterday we actually ran double crop soybeans, which, I mean, they need to get done, but they are not a priority at all. But it was the only thing we could really get across uh, to get anything done, so we did it. Oh, we got more to do. Hey, Trevor, are you in the grain cart or which combine? So one of our neighbors is running corn over there with a grain cart and beans over there, and it's the same guys, and uh, one of them's watching. Shell and corn as I speak. How are you doing this fine afternoon? Scott, things are going well here. Uh, we're running some fantastic corn. It may not look it out there because the tops are starting to break out of it, well, this corn's running 220 plus, and uh, it's it's fun running good corn. Did I see water in the headland? Yes, you did. There is some water back there. Um, this is a field that we had started a month ago. I don't know, back in September. It was the day before we did my corn plot, whenever that was, and. Uh, so the stuff that you can see on the far side over there that's already harvested, a bunch over there. Uh, we had done basically half this field, about 70 acres before, including the endros back there. And uh, yeah, there's standing water in there. There's a lot of volunteer corn and it gets ugly. But we're getting the rest of it finally. stock health then there. Corn stock health is okay. So anything that did not get sprayed with a fungicide, the stalks are a little questionable because um, we had some disease come in, that tar spot specifically, but other things as well. And uh, stalks aren't great because of that. The stuff that did get sprayed with a fungicide is standing pretty well. This stuff all did. Uh, there are still differences in hybrids. This is not one of my better stocked hybrids, and so the tops are breaking out, but it is still standing really well. Nothing's down where I can't pick it up, so uh, it's time to get it, but it's not a problem yet. Smash the anchors down here in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. You're not down there in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. You're up a little bit. 
but yeah, cool. Good to see you guys are uh, moving over there as well. Of all the places in Canada, Windsor and Southern Ontario is about as close to here as any of it gets. Uh, I'll be glad I'm not your dad, otherwise the only combine time something you can get would be beans, low harps and corn and beans. Yeah, uh, I do most of the beans because we don't necessarily run a green card all the time with beans. Uh, I, I, in the corn I get, I get some seed time in the corn and sometimes not. If rocks around and you can run your cart, then I'll probably in the combine. Or if we're in short rows, we're making rounds. But Rock's got to leave at four today, and uh, if we're not done here, then Dad will come over and run the combine. I'm sure. So that's all right. He's allowed to run it. Any harvest done in Berkey yet? No, we have not made it there. We contemplated going down there today, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow. And the worst thing that could happen is we move down there and get stuck, and we can't. We're not going to go down there and do a field of beans and then move back here if we got more rain or whatever. And so, since we can work here, we're going to stay here until this next rain system goes through and then we'll think about moving to Berkey depending on how wet it is. Dad was down there yesterday and looked and it's still really wet. He said nobody else was running or doing anything. Uh, we've had a lot more rain there than here and it is wet here. So. It doesn't look good. We've got to get there. We've got to do it soon. But I just, I don't know how or when it's going to happen. Yeah, it's absolutely time to get there. I just I can't. Uh, now that Brock is an absolute pro at the grain cart, that's, that's a stretch, isn't it, Brock? I think it's time to get some, a little seat time in the combine. Well, Todd, you clearly haven't watched today's video. I gave Brock some seat time in the combine yesterday. He ran two or three rounds of double crab beans for me. I am not ready to let him get in the combine and while I run green card and not be in here with him. Maybe next year. I like the new combine. Man, this combine is awesome. And uh, I've said before in my videos, it's not a super big performance upgrade from a um, capacity standpoint. Um, but it is a lot smoother. There's a lot less wear on it. We have a lot less little minor breakdowns that are just frustrating but cost time. And it's the technology and some of the little things make a big difference in how nice it is to run. And yeah, it's awesome. I love this combine. It's, it's fantastic. It's going to be here for a long time. Uh, I hope it's as good a combine as the last one was. Uh, how are you guys so successful and how can and can afford all these nice new things? Do you have off-farm income? Well, the farm and off-farm in, off income are two completely separate things. Uh, we are successful because my dad has made a very, very, uh, uh, he's made a lot of very good decisions over the last 40 years. And we've been doing it for 40 years. Um, it has not always been this way. We didn't buy new equipment when I was a kid. But we've been pretty fortunate in the last 10 to 15 years here that we've been able to. And, uh, you know, the combine, this combine that we just bought, uh, we ran the last one for seven years. It's not like it's not like we just buy a new combine every year and new tractors and stuff. The the tractor over there, the green car tractor, is a 2012, and it's got over 4,000 hours on it, which is not a huge number of hours, but it's not new by any means. Um, I, yeah, we're successful because my dad has made. A lot of very, very good decisions and done a very good job farming for 40 years. So uh, I hope that I'm doing as good or can help to improve things as we continue to move forward because there's always room for improvement. But I, my dad, that's why. Uh, I need to replace the steering valve on my 3020. What's your review of the Edgemark one you installed on the 
40 20. Yeah, so if you guys uh, don't know what he's talking about there, I put a uh, uh, newer updated steering valve on our 4020, basically the steering column uh, last winter because we were having steering issues. It fixed the steering issues. Uh, the new one works really well. It seems to be a little bit touchy, uh, jumpier than it used to be, which could be because it's new and there's, you know, the clearances are good and everything and it's not leaking and causing problems. Uh, could also be because uh, the, the, you fix one problem on those tractors and it increases hydraulic pressure, which then blows seals out of something else. So I think that the motor, the steering motor, which is the part on the front axle that actually turns, is going to have to get replaced this winter. Um, like I said, it works fine. It's just a little jumpy, especially at 18, 20 miles an hour on the road. Other than that, it's great. Hello from Germany. Welcome to my live stream. This is a decent hour for people in Europe, so hopefully a few of you are checking in. Driven thresher and grain binder setup to go with your 3020, I assume. Time to make the turn. That last truck is gone. It was full. Phil came, swapped it out with that truck. So we'll rock along a little over there. We do have a little water. Right there. It'll be fine. Nice new combine. Thank you. Is that new combine a rental? No, it is not a rental. We bought this machine. It was uh, brand new when we got it last week. I've got, what do we got? Let's find out. Uh, engine. Oh man, we're up to 45 hours on this machine already. Racking them up. 1900 hours. That would be 7 o'clock. That's a good time. Save those videos for night when I'm working out. Oh, today, yeah. Uh, what did you upgrade from and to? Right, so our old combine was an S680. It's a 2014 model year. And uh, the new one is an S780. So it's the same size machine, same capacity, same horsepower. Um, it's a series newer, and this is a 21 model, so seven years newer. And it's awesome. If you look at a 770 or a 790, not really, not seriously. Um, a 770 would be a perfect machine for what I'm doing right now for shelling corn with an eight row corn head. The problem is with our 40 foot draper, we need the more power combine beans faster. So when we bought that 680, we actually had two combines before that. We ran uh, two smaller ones, a 9550 and a 9660. And we kind of made the decision to go to one big combine instead of two smaller ones. We only ever ran one combine in corn anyway, so we were running two for beans and wheat but decided that concentrating our labor and just having one operator for a combine was a better idea. And um, that worked out really well. The thing about it was is we needed to be able to get our beans done as quickly as possible so that we could focus on corn. And so we decided to go with the 40-foot draper head and uh, needed the power to run it. And I debated a lot back then of do we go with a 670 or a 680. And, um, from the research and stuff reviews that I had done, I decided that the 80 was a better fit for um, the 40 foot Draper. I'm glad I did that because there are times now when I run out of power and I just I want to drive faster. I just can't because we don't have the capacity and the power to do it and push it through the machine. So uh, really, a 790 would be better for beans. A 770 would be better for corn. So we compromised. We met in the middle of a 780. And it's, it's plenty sufficient for what we're doing. Uh, there was a guy who this year who went to 22 inch rows here in Lenawee County, so it really helped with sustainability. Now that's interesting. So you don't see 22 inch rows around here very much. Um, 
22s are really popular where they raise sugar beets. So Red River Valley, the Fub of Michigan, um, and occasionally a, a 22 inch row planter will end up in this neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood that's combined over here that I talked about a little bit ago, they actually have a 22 inch row bean planter that they're using. Personally, I think 22 inch rows would be ideal uh, if you weren't doing 30s, because you can plant both corn and beans on them and uh, it gives you a little extra width to be able to drive down the rows more so than 20 inch. I'm not entirely sure that you could do uh, uh, run in high dress or side dress 22 inch rows, but you'd be better to do 22 than 20. So I don't know. Uh, it's something we've thought about. It's probably never going to happen. 30 inch rows work well for us. I'm combining 230 bushel corn right now in 30 inch rows. So pretty hard to complain about that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. There are a few guys around here that run 20s. Any thoughts on your employees strike? Uh, yeah, but you probably don't want to hear them. Uh, I, yeah. I don't, I haven't followed it real close, so I don't know exactly what the demands from the gear factory employees are and why they're striking. Um, but I would just venture a guess, just purely a guess, but the deer employees are probably already some of the best uh, paid factory workers in the country, certainly in their area, and they probably have some of the best working conditions in the world. So for them to go on strike complaining about working conditions or pay seems silly to me. I, I don't know. But I've been in those factories. They're remarkably clean. They, I mean, it's, and the working conditions are not something they can complain about. I don't think. So, you know, maybe there's something more to it that I'm not following and I just haven't followed it close enough because, let's face it, I, there's nothing I'm gonna do about it. I, should I care? Probably. Do I? Not really, because it just doesn't matter at this point. But, uh, anyway, yeah, we'll move on. Go Bucks! Love yourself studies on fungicides, insecticides versus not using them, explaining and not hiding the facts helps the whole farming community. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that was part of the whole point of this is to be very transparent and to show that stuff. And I know some of it gets a little complicated and deep and if you're not part of the farming world you may not fully understand it, but if I treat you like you're not going to understand anything and just don't tell you, that's that's not real good for transparency. Is it? So. Um, I try and show it. I, you know, there's a lot more that goes into farming than this part right here and sitting in the combine. It's a lot of analysis and decision making and trying to figure out the best way to do things and how to maximize our yields and productivity and all kinds of different things. And all of that data collection and those studies that I do all factor in and help me make those decisions. And some things are easy to correct, some things are not. You know, like that compaction study I did the other day and I showed you. Uh, I know that compaction is costing me yield. I also know a few things that I can do to help alleviate compaction. They're all expensive and hard to do. And so, you know, it's easy to say, well, just put tracks on everything. Right, well, that cost me over a million dollars. It's not that easy. So how do you do that step by step? Which one component or two things that I can do reasonably well will make the biggest impact and where do you start and how do you figure all that stuff out. So that's what we're doing. You know, again, I, I, I'll show you the data because it's all part of it. Hello from Croatia. Welcome. Hello from Illinois. How's your harvest going? Uh, harvest is going pretty well. Um, we're well over a month into it at this point and I would like to be farther along, but the last two weeks have been so wet and rainy that it's been hard to get anything done. So I'm glad we did as much in September as we did because we were way ahead of the game, or at least we were way ahead of the game before it started raining. Uh, there was a point where I thought we might be done harvesting in October. It doesn't look like it's going to happen anymore, but you never know, it's possible. Really like your daddy to go over your videos, very informative. Thank you. How uh, did you have to wait for your combine? We just ordered one and I'm hoping to get it by wheat harvest. 
Yeah, so about that, so waiting for the combine. Um, so we got pretty lucky with this one. Um, we kind of casually shopped for a combine last year in December after we got done with harvest. Um, we were mostly looking at year two old ones, trying to find something that was relatively low hour that we could uh, um, buy a little cheaper than a brand new one. I thought they were ridiculously overpriced at the time. Um, so we decided to run our old one for another year. And then the spring happened, we got everything planted really well, the crops looked really good. And then wheat harvest happened and we had phenomenal wheat. We averaged almost 100 bushel an acre on our wheat. And our other crops looked really, really good, like our corn and beans that looked like we were going to have a great year. The prices kept going up and so things were looking pretty good. And we decided, yeah, let's look for a combine. So I started looking around again at used ones that were a year or two old. There weren't a ton of them available, a few here and there, but uh, I ended up getting a hold of my dealer and talking to uh, the salesman and asking him about new combines. And, you know, initially I kind of thought maybe we'd order one for next year, and I knew that that order program was going to happen before harvest, like in August. So I wanted to get stuff lined up to be able to do that if that's what we decided we wanted to do. And uh, then I found out that they had stock ordered some combines a year ago, like in September, October of 2020, just to have in and be able to sell, um, you know, to people that were looking for a new combine this year. I didn't know dealers would, were able to stock order or order any new equipment without a, a name already attached to it, so I was sort of surprised by that. And uh, so I asked them what they had coming, and this was one of them. And so we put our name on this in July, uh, but they had ordered it back in September or October. Uh, fortunately, at the time that we ordered it, it was not, well, fortunately or not, I guess, it was not so close to production that the options on it were locked. We were able to modify the codes and, and, and what we wanted on this combine before they built it. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously we got it last week. So uh, if you just ordered it in the last month or so, I would say your chances of getting it by Wii Harvest are not great. I've heard that you can't order combines anymore and expect to get them before next fall. Like you're out to 23 harvest before you're going to get it. So good luck. I don't know. But congratulations on the new combine. That's awesome. Phil is the man. Everyone needs a Phil. Does whatever needs doing and don't point the camera. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. He does a good job with the grain hauling and keeping trucks moving. We're going to probably get ahead of him here, but that'll be all right. Uh, I have not seen maintenance on the semis this winter. Is that because Phil does that or do you take them somewhere else? Yeah, so Phil does most of the trunk maintenance. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff in-house. Brakes and we need to change a brake chamber, um, that kind of stuff, greasing and all that. If it's anything engine or electrical or more involved, we'll take the dealer, um, but I don't do it. That's why I, it's, it's not something that I take care of. The combine, uh, no, I remember Phil driving the combine when I was like six or seven. Uh, I, it's been a very, very, very long time since Phil's drove the combine. Uh, how many acres you got left? up the hard work yeah so progress on harvest and where we're at i think not counting the double crop beans we've got about 400 acres of beans left and maybe closer to 500 somewhere between 450 and 500 um on corn seven ish 700 acres of corn left maybe a little less than that after today so not a huge amount but it's going to take a little while yet How's your house coming? Yeah, um, whenever I get a chance and it's still daylight, I'm going to give you guys a house update. There has been some progress the last couple of weeks, which is exciting, finally. Um, they have been working on the drywall. They're sh supposed to have that finished by the end of the week. Now, we will see if that's going to be the case or not. Uh, but the big exciting news is yesterday they came to start working on the siding. Finally, finally. 
we're going to get sighting on this house. They're there today again working on that, so I'm excited to go and see it later this afternoon and see if anything's actually changed. Yesterday it was mostly trimming windows out and out, uh, so not a lot of visible visible difference, but yeah, I've, I've been asking and begging for them to put sighting on this house for two months. Uh, they finished framing in July, and I told them when we were going through the process of ordering, or not ordering, of signing a contract and quoting out the house and stuff a year ago, one of the things that drove me crazy is when houses get framed, they get put up, and then they sit there for months with no sighting on them. Like, why? Put the dang sighting on them. And then our house sat for three months with no sighting. Not real happy about it, but they had complications and everything, and I get it. It's just frustrating, so. And we're waiting on the front doors, the exterior doors to come in. Um, those came in two weeks ago. They got those installed, which was nice to see happen. They told me the sighting was going to come last week. They didn't show up. I, whatever reason, they were on a different job or something. Um, so finally, this week, they're there doing sighting, which is great. Uh, any thoughts, plans on transitioning to no-till? Uh, not, not exclusive no-till, no. We do some no-till. All of our wheat is no-till, the vast majority of it. Um, we also have and do sometimes no-till soybeans, which is is mostly uh, effective and, and a good practice for us. I do like running our disc over the soybean ground because it helps break the stalks down. It makes them a lot easier to harvest in the fall uh, when you don't have that old corn stalk residue there to deal with. And it gives a little nicer seed bed to plant in too. Um, that said, no-till on corn is likely not going to happen here. Not anytime soon. It's not something I want to do. Uh, anytime we have done any no-till on corn, that corn struggles. It's never as good, and I cannot afford to take a 20, 30, 40 bushel yield hit to no-till. I can't do it. Um, I know everybody that doesn't no-till says it doesn't work in our ground. I'm going to tell you the same thing. That said, I do think it would work. I think it could work. I'm just not a good enough farmer to get away with it. That's what I tell people. Uh, I have started doing a little bit more and different stuff with some of the cover crops. I'm trying some stale seed bed where we do the tillage and wheat stubble in the summer, late summer, plant a cover crop in it, and then stale seed bed plant that in the spring so we're not doing any spring tillage. I think that's a good practice. I like doing that. Um, but it has its own challenges as well. And full no-till is just, I, I just don't think it works. Our clay soils get compacted and we have to break that compaction layer up. And I, I just don't know how we can get away with no-till. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. All right, I'm gonna try and move you guys around a little bit because I'm tired of looking at my phone up there. So bear with me. Let's try. Nope, not like that. Let's try this. Pay attention to what I'm doing too. Um, when selecting hybrids to plant, how much do you consider historic yield, test weight, and moisture? Thanks for the great content. Right, so of those three things, uh, historic yield is obviously the most important because yield drives everything. Moisture uh, would probably be my second consideration, and from there, test weight. Er, that's not going to work. You guys are bumping the screen. So, yeah, um, come on. Yield is the, is the primary thing on anything uh, when we're picking out hybrids, varieties, all of that. So, the other things that factor into hybrids is selection is um, plot results and uh, what other people's experience with the hybrids are. What I'm hearing from my agronomist and my seed company uh, a lot of times will get me to try something but usually not on a uh, large scale huge number of acres. Um, so our previous yield history is without a doubt the most important thing when picking out uh, corn hybrids and bean varieties. Uh, I like to see your test. See you test your theory about compaction. Get a loaner or a track tractor and play corn. See the comparison. Yeah, that doesn't work. 
Like, you guys are pretty quick to say, well, why don't you just get a track tractor and rent it or loan one? Well, because there aren't any available. Where am I supposed to just get a track tractor to use? <laughs> it's not like I can just drive to the dealer's lot and say, oh, hey, can I use that tractor? Even if they had one, they wouldn't probably do that. Um, so it's not quite that easy. I would love to try a track tractor, but I, there are rarely track tractors sitting on any of the dealer lots around here. They're not very common. Like, they're very few and far between around here, and, uh, I, they're, yeah, they're just, they're not there. Um, we're on the other side of Lake Huron. It's raining here all morning. Oh, that's no good. Other side of Lake Huron, though, is way north of Canada. That pla uh, plastic on my seat, I'm assuming. Is there plastic on my seat? This. Yeah. The problem is they, they put the seat cushion on without taking the plastic off, so I can't get it out unless I take the cushion off, which is a winter project, not a middle of fall harvest project. Carrie, nice to see you again. It's been a while since I've seen your comments. But thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Brock's in the way. Truck's full. Oh, the truck is full. What am I going to do? How full is the green card? Not full enough. We're going to make another round. All right, you guys got to go back up here. Make another round, Brock. He's in my way. Dude, he's so in my way. Dude, you are terribly in the way. I would train our 8430 in and get a newer tractor. Uh, that tractor is a 2009 model. It's got well over 5,000 hours on it. And uh, in my opinion, it's time to upgrade. Um, I think Phil thinks we should train the 8300 and keep the 8430 around as a backup spare tractor, which seems crazy to have a uh, spare that's worth that much money sitting around just in case that we don't use that much. Um, but I can see that. The problem is my dad loves the 8300 and he doesn't want to get rid of it. So, what do we do? I mean, I'll trade the 8R if they don't want to get rid of either of those tractors, but the 8430 is the one that makes sense to me. The problem is the 8300 is not a capable backup for most of what we're doing with these tractors now. It's not big enough to pull our disc. It's not big enough to pull our grain cart. It doesn't have the hydraulic capacity to run our planters or the electronic capacity. So it's, it's not super functional for farm field tasks. It's great for other things. Dad loves it for running this uh, small scraper. Um, we can run our small field cultivator with it. But it sees maybe 80 to 100 hours a year and we just don't use it a ton. So exactly what makes your channel, the way you explain it all in simple language, makes not farming people. That even non first language English speakers stand. Awesome, thank you. Man, if, I'm, if that's way back to that discussion, I'm way behind. I'm sorry. Hi uh, from York, Pennsylvania, Finland. We got your 680 just in time before the strike. Looks like you're going to be right. Yeah, we did get it just in time before that strike. I have a feeling our draper head is stuck in Illinois. We aren't going to see it, which I don't want. I don't want to use it this fall. I want to use it in wheat harvest for the first time. So I'm hoping that we don't get it until we're done with beans. How many acres of corn and soy do you have left to harvest? Have I answered that since you asked that question? I, I mean, I answered it not long ago, so hopefully. Uh, if you have thoughts of entering the seed harvest market since you own the treater? Uh, no, and that's two completely different things. Because there's a middleman in there that has to clean and process the seed and owns the genetics and everything. Uh, it's not like if we were raising seed for a, uh, a seed company, we could just 
harvest the seed, I can treat it and sell it. That doesn't work that way, so. Uh, should get a late night tonight. Yeah, Bert, it, uh, we should, it's possible. Um, the question is, are we gonna have anything to do and where are we gonna go and is it dry enough? But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good day here today. Hi from Ontario. You think you'll be in Berkey next week? I'm really hoping. So the plan here is to finish here today, see what we get for rain tomorrow, and hopefully, hopefully it's a minor amount, a tenth or less, or not very much, and we can uh, go to Berkey maybe even Friday. I, I don't know. It all depends on the rainfall at this point. It's just so wet. Say substantial rain next week. Yeah, that doesn't count. Substantial rain next week would not be good. How am I supposed to deliver diesel fuel to combines if you're doing a lot? Yeah, I don't know, man. Sorry. Makes it hard, doesn't it? Balloon tires for your anhydrous trailer. Well, yeah, the anhydrous tanks themselves I don't think are causing a ton of compaction because they're just not that heavy. Uh, there is some weight there, uh, but we don't own them. Those are owned by the fertilizer supplier where we get our anhydrous from, and so we don't... We don't maintain them, we don't put tires on them, we don't do any of that. We don't even get the same tanks every year or every time, so there's no way we can change the tires on those. Okay, where are we at? Hi from Ontario. Good afternoon. I hope your harvest is going very well. So bouncy, I can't read. And you get good harvest bushels per acre so far, and it's going good for you. Yes, thank you. It is going well as I turn on the neighbor's field. Sorry, Trevor. Hit your field a little bit. Uh, no kidding, there's so much clay my tomato field that I have to deep rip every year and also started collecting leaves and more water plowing them in and really fluff the soil from here. Yeah, so uh, that comment, guy that left it, he's not too far from here, east of here, a few uh, miles north. Maybe. Uh, there's a lot of specialty crops when you get over in the southeast part of Michigan, well, all over Michigan, but <laughs> just north of Toledo in that area. Uh, tomatoes, cabbage, all that stuff. Anybody that's running that stuff, they're running so much traffic through and it's so wet sometimes when they're doing it. They rip everything every year or whenever there's uh, that kind of uh, crop in there. So, yeah, that, those are not things you can no-till. All the best from Scotland. Welcome. Thank you. Always while I'm at work glad I was logged in to catch this part. Uh, anyway, yeah, sorry about the new on the day live stream, I guess. I don't know. I do a lot of them at night evenings and then I get complaints that it's too late so I thought I'd mix it up and do one in the middle of the afternoon here for, for people. Um, have you gotten the active yield working to your satisfaction? Uh, no, I have not. Um, I'm still messing with it. I did another manual yield calibration where we started in this field earlier this morning to get it dialed in and it's pretty close. It's within, a, within a few percent, two or three I think. Um, this corn that I'm doing right now is actually part of a nitrogen study trial that I did this year, and they wanted the combine to be as accurate as possible. So that's why I did that manual calibration and I left it on manual. I didn't switch back to the active because I don't want it modifying it during uh, the harvesting of this nitrogen trial. I want it to be at least consistent. Even if we're off by three or four bushel of the acre, that's not a big deal as long as they're all off by the same amount and they're consistent. Um, how do you accurately track yields when monitors are always needing calibration? Seems like whenever the quality harvested is subjective. Yeah, so that's a good point. It is hard to, um, I'm gonna make sure we don't overflow the cart here, so. Uh, it, it's hard when the combine calibration isn't right. Honestly, the old combine, I'll get it, Brock. With the old combine, it's, um, was so accurate, the yield monitor was so accurate, I didn't worry about it. It just, it was always right and dead on. 
This one I'm struggling a little bit, but I think once I get it dialed in, it'll be just as accurate too. And while it is going to change when you go from 18% corn like we're doing now to 25 to 30% corn, uh, it should dial itself in and fix. And you're not comparing those two situations very often anyway. Uh, you know, a lot of my side by sides and trials and stuff are all in the same field, and they should have relatively similar quality and. Uh, and you shouldn't see massive differences in the in, that's going to cause yield monitor issues. This is what I'm saying. So. Tart's almost full. I don't know if he's going to have enough to fill a truck with that. We do have an empty truck, so we're going to keep moving here. So normally, when we're unloading on the go like this, I am very much a, it is the cart driver's job to keep that grain cart where it needs to be underneath the auger. Like, you do it, because I'm busy. I, I'm combining and live streaming. So um, I don't I don't really pay that much attention to it. If the cart's not there, it's his fault and not mine. When we're topping it off like this, when it gets really full, he can't see. He can't see how far back he's got to fill that. He can't see how much is in the back there. You uh, can see in the front a little bit better, but not in the back. And so once we get to where it's almost full, I want my cart driver to just maintain a constant speed let me speed up and slow down to get it full like I want. So that is a pretty well loaded green card. Brock, how much weight you got on there? Let's see if he's listening. You say 51 or 61? 61,000. 61, That's a lot. Oh, I missed. Oh, no. Uh, 61,000 is more than a truckload, so it will fill a semi and then we'll uh, almost had a row of shame situation. Okay. Um, Diedrich Fair, thank you for that awesome super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, I will do my best to keep up the good work. So, thank you for that. I only live five miles from your Berkey farm. I know your cousin Nick. Oh, cool. Yeah, so at our farm down there in Berkey, we do have a, a farm site there. We have. Um, a barn and some grain bins. You guys have seen them. I've had them on the channel. There's a house there. That's where my dad grew up. It was my grandpa's house. Uh, my cousin Nick lives there now. So anyway, the boys are homeschooled this year, so they're <laughs> nice. I don't know if I qualifies, but all right. Uh, just watched today's video, really enjoyed that you put the cost breakdown of crops in the videos unique to this channel. Yeah, I mean, I share a lot of that details and stuff. It's not, it's, it's not everything by any means. It's not enough for you guys to know, you know, how many dollars I take home at the end of the day, but it is enough to give you an idea of the economics of how uh, farming works and stuff and the decision-making process, right? That's what I'm trying to show is the decision-making process and why and how we do the things that we do and so obviously the financials play a large role into that it's the whole point of this is to make money right and uh, especially with the double crop situation yesterday you know why would we plant double crop beans why what's the point in messing with it there are 23 bushel beans how can you make money growing 23 bushel beans well because they're double crop because my expenses are extremely low and it's a bonus on top of the money that we made from growing the wheat crop already so, that's how. Uh, how do your dad and uncle split up the responsibilities of the farm? Well, we all kind of have our own jobs. And I mean, I'm included in that too, right? So, uh, how it got this way to start with, I don't really know. Uh, things have modified over the years. I've come in and taken on more and more of the responsibility. But my dad, when I was a kid, he always planted all the corn. He did all the spraying. And he drove the combine. 
Phil planted all the beans. He did all the grain system management stuff. And once we got semi trucks, did all the grain hauling. And he put all the anhydrous on. Um, he planted all the wheat. Those are those are just the jobs that he did. Uh, and a lot of the tillage work. I remember Phil doing a lot of the tillage work when I was a kid. Now, obviously, stuff has changed. Um, I do all the corn planting now. My dad still does the vast majority of the spraying, especially early in the year when I'm busy in the corn planter. Phil still plants most of the beans. I do the anhydrous. I run the combine probably 75% of the time. Dad does the rest. Phil still does all the grain handling and uh, hauling stuff for most of it. Usually he plants the wheat still. Uh, it's just the way that it is. How it got that way, I don't know. It's what everybody likes to do, I guess. Uh, I'm sure those things will continue to evolve, but it's, it's how it is for now. On track to finish before the snow. Well, I don't know when the snow's coming, but I sure hope so. We should still be done relatively early with harvest. Like we're not as far ahead of the game as we were because of the rain that we've had, but we are still making progress and things are still progressing. So hopefully by 10-ish uh, of November, we'll be wrapping up harvest. We do have a lot of tillage work to do. We just need it to dry up. Uh, we're finally getting some of that done today, but we have a long ways to go on tillage work. Hello from Edgerton, Ohio. You're pretty close. Uh, Germany will start harvesting corn tomorrow. Cool. Think you need tracks. Go no-till and organic. Yeah, thanks. I'll do my best. One of those three might happen. Uh, lots of wet fields around here. Yep, lots of wet fields around here too. Surprisingly, there's not much mud sticking to the tires. We're not tracking stuff up too bad, so uh, that is good. out of the neighbor's field this time. Uh, would you put Bay West Stock Stompers on the Cornhead? I would. In fact, announcement time, right? So I ordered a set of Bay West Stock Stompers for this Cornhead. Uh, I've looked at Stock Stompers before. We never bought any. I didn't like how big and bulky they were. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the old, well, I should, shouldn't say old, they still make them, but the original style of stock stompers, I guess, where it's more of a skid shoe with a big spring that pushes down on the back side of it. And they take up a lot of space. They're heavy, they're bulky, they're hard to put your head on a trailer because of that. And I didn't like that, so we never got them. Uh, the May West ones, though, are a whole different design with their torsion spring in there and being sort of flat, and I really like those. Um, so I ordered a set. We're gonna put them on here. Uh, not really because I'm so concerned about smashing the stalks down, but I'm trying to protect the tires on this combine. The tires on our old combine were getting really tore up along the edges of the, the outside edges of the tires because they run right on the stalks, and the back tires were in the middle where it's running over a corn stalk road all the time. And so um, I didn't. I don't have them yet, but we are going to put a set of, of, of socks, dog stompers on this corn head. It's, it's going to be after harvest at this point because we're just not going to get them in time. They're supposed to come in November. But um, yeah, so we'll run those next year. Uh, I would love one of them. This key trackers? No idea from Japan that they used in rice fields that are three foot on the ground with tracks, three point, like many NRTs. I'm not familiar with them. Are you able to grow your own feed instead of buying it to cut cost? No, we're not. Um, and on corn you wouldn't want to, because corn is a hybrid. And if you planted, if we planted this corn that we're harvesting right now, it wouldn't grow and yield worth of crap. It'd be terrible. On beet, uh, all of the varieties are patented. They all have um, uh, patented technology in them with the herbicide resistant traits. And so it is very, very, very illegal to save seed and plant it again next year. Do people do it? Yeah, they do. 
Uh, but I don't want to get caught. If, if I wouldn't want to be the one to get caught if it was me. Let's just put it that way. And being that I sell seed, probably not a good idea. So uh, we do not raise our own seed. Jim, welcome. How's the 780 treating you? 780 is awesome. It's uh, it's working really well. Kid, let me tell you, getting me into farming sucks. I'm on my second year farming two acres of vegetables in 22. Building myself. Probably wouldn't change it, but my God, is it very intensive. Yeah, man, uh, two, uh, two acres of vegetables, is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? Still no Dr. Pepper contract. Still no Dr. Pepper contract. What is wrong with those people? In fact, I'm out of Dr. Pepper. I need to stop at the store and buy some more. The fridge is empty. This one and the one in the office. Still in the Hayfield in Maryland. We've been making uh, mulch through the end of November with weather. You, you make hay mulch and not straw mulch? Interesting. Uh, North Carolina, gun picking corn, planting wheat, and planting beans. Picking beans. Cool, good deal. Boys are going to come around right about the time to be big help on the farm. Hopefully, Brock will be around for another 40 years. Well, I don't know. Do I really want Brock around for another 40 years? Let's see if he looks at me. There's got to be a delay on the video here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're a good, a good 10 years for my boys being great help on the farm, um, and they should be. Now, I don't want to force them into it, so hopefully they will, but I'm not going to sit here and tell them, oh, you got to do this, because, because. Uh, but I'm going to need the help, right? Because my dad and Phil aren't going to do this forever, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll see. It'll be nice. They keep telling me they're going to drive the combine. Grayson's going to drive the combine. Rylan's going to be a bike. I could say something on the live stream. I really appreciate everything that uh, on the live stream. I would like to appreciate Mark and Phil and Nathan and everything they've taught me. Thanks, Brock. Brock's uh, been here almost a year, not quite. I think he started in November last year, and uh, he, he does a good job. Um, it's, you know, like today, I, I need the help. We're getting more done because he's here. Uh, he was great help in the shop last winter, and uh, I, I, there's still things to learn, but he does a pretty good job, so. Greetings from Greece. Love you two boys. They're really like hanging out with you at the farm. Something like that. Yep, they do. Uh, they're fun to have around. We in Germany only do strip till 10 inches deep before corn, and our strip till also applies with the manure. Oh, cool. Uh, are you in charge of picking out the seed varieties for the farm? Yes. So, because I do the seed dealership stuff and, and I'm uh, pretty well versed in seed varieties in the seed industry, uh, that was one of the very first things Dad kind of gave up control of and let me start handling was picking out seed varieties and hybrids. Um, and I appreciate that, but there's a lot of trust there for me to do that. And uh, he's, yeah, we've done really well. Uh, we have, we've had really good crops. And I mean, the seed, seed's been good. Um, you know, I don't hit home runs every time, but we've done all right. So, yes, I handle that. Uh, any option on the combine you didn't get and wish you did now? Um, I mean the $90,000 tracks, but no, I don't wish that I would have gotten them. Um, I wish I had the cameras to make the uh, combine advisor package work. I ordered them, it's coming, uh, they just don't have them. Other than that, there's not a lot that we didn't get. I didn't get the heated floor mat, but it's not that cold yet. Maybe in a few weeks I'll need that. What else? There's not a ton of options that we didn't get, to be honest. So, no, not really. Uh, yes, mulch hay for mushroom, barns, and compost facilities. Interesting. I would think they would use all straw for that. 
Did you get any extra views with Maddie and the thumbnail from last week's video? You know, you guys, I tell you what. I put my smoking hot wife in the thumbnail and it gets normal views or whatever, not, not a whole lot. I put my sister in the thumbnail in the next one and the roof views go through the roof and I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. It was probably better content in Anna's video because I was doing more exciting stuff that day, but you didn't know that when you clicked on it. Uh, your speculation on next year's input cost increase. Uh, percent increase, yeah. Um, changes, or it varies based on the input. So seed cost up slightly, five-ish percent, I would say. Maybe, maybe close to 10, but that's got more to do with picking new genetics and newer varieties rather than some of the older ones that I planted this year. Um, fuel prices up substantially. Our propane drying cost for running the grain dryer right now is double what it was a year ago. We're close to it. But our corn's a lot drier, so we're not having to use as much. Um, I have not really seen chemical prices yet. Rumor has it they're going to be up pretty substantially. The big one is fertilizer. Our fertilizer costs have over doubled. Uh, we're starting to approach three times what we were last year on some of the fertilizer costs. So uh, it's it's really bad on that. Uh, nitrogen looks like it's going to be extremely expensive. And we're trying to decide do we, do we buy it and lock it in at high prices or do we wait it out? taper off towards spring and everybody's telling you to buy now but usually that's a pretty good sign to not buy now so I don't know and with some cash flow deals and stuff and we've already spent more money in the fall than we usually do just from uh, 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 you know increased in the fall broadcast fertilizer the seed bill came due a month before it usually does there's been a lot of expenses that already had to pay and we don't even have all the crop charges in yet um, so we're debating on that one, but just for an example, last year we paid $165 a ton for 28. 28 is the nitrogen source that we use for wheat, uh, yeah, for wheat, top dressing wheat in the spring. Uh, the price I got that's good for right now, until today actually, is uh, $510 a ton. And that hurts. That hurts a lot. So do we buy it for $510 a ton? Or do we say, heck no, I ain't paying that. And risk paying seven or 800 in the spring, or maybe it goes back down to 400, who knows? I, I don't know, I don't know what the right answer is there. Uh, ooh, that was a rough one. God bless your dad and Phil with long and healthy lives. Yes, that would be, that would be a very good thing. Uh, if you are ever hiring totally in. Lots of experience. Well, we'll see. Uh, we're, we're not right now. thought I saw a post about Mac dating your sister. Maybe we'll be, oh no. No, 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 no. No, no. We're not close enough to Brock for me to see his reaction to that, but um, I don't know. You did see a post about that, though. How many PSI in your combine duels? whatever they come with. I probably should check that, to be honest. I trust the dealer to have set it up properly, though. I think they have about 35-ish pounds in them, something like that. Uh, these are the big 650 duels, so they're a little lower pressure than if they were smaller tires, but I'm not sure. Do you think that prices for fertilizer, diesel, etc. will keep going up? Yeah, that's the discussion we just had, right? Um, I think fuel prices will, will stabilize or taper off and maybe not increase so rapidly. Fertilizer is just such a guessing game right now. Personally, I don't see how they can justify increasing them much more. Um, at some point, people are just going to stop buying them. And we might be getting to that point. I don't know. But I, I, I don't know. I don't have a good answer. Not quite the learning curve nowadays, like in the late 70s and early 80s when I learned to rope. I assume you're back on the farming, starting farming content. Uh, uh, oh, for Brock and Kurt. Yeah, you know, it's still, there's a lot. Um, 
the computer side of stuff, for somebody that's not familiar with it, it's, it's a lot to pick up. I've seen in your videos that the beans had white mold in them. So how bad were they? Yeah, we had a lot of white mold. Um, the thing is, when I saw the white mold show up in August, I thought it was going to be the difference between 60 bushel beans where we didn't have it and 35 bushel beans where we did. Turns out it was the difference between 75 and 60. So it doesn't hurt so much, but it's still pretty significant, right? That's still a big hit. Didn't you just empty into that cart or into that truck? Wasn't it empty? Well, then why are you full? Is this the second round since you emptied into the truck? big winter project this year, like tiling or machine maintenance. Well, I'm hoping to work on that F12 a little bit more. Should be a relatively uh, calm off-season maintenance program, let's say, because uh, we don't have as much to do to the combine, just cleaning mostly. Uh, but I'm going to be working on my house a lot this winter. So it's looking like it's going to be January before the house is done, but Dad and I are doing the flooring. I'm doing a lot of stuff with the uh, shelving in the closets and with um, um, garage, they're not finishing the garage, so I want to do that pretty quickly. Basement, all that kind of stuff that um, uh, I'm going to be spending a bunch of time down there. So those are my winter plans. Well, we're going to have to wait on Phil for a minute. So, top off the cart. Get what's on the combine here. Where am I at? We might end this here. Uh, someone at the deer plant is putting the cameras in the box that are sitting there at their station. That is not occupied. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's a sourced part. I don't think deer builds them and I don't think they can get them from their supplier. That's what I think on those cameras. Okay. Uh, is Anna going to help in the future? I don't know. Um, she's kind of talked about it. I think Anna really likes the decision-making process and some of the analytic stuff. Uh, I don't know that she really wants to do the day-to-day -day labor stuff, the stuff that I hired Brock to do. <laughs> uh, get a hold of Green Mart and tell them you want to buy a track tractor. I would like to demo it for planting and see how that turns out. Yeah, we could try that. What's up, Brock? Uh, how will getting the cameras work? Do you know if Deer will ship them to the receiving dealer and then the techs come out and install? Yeah, they told me that the, the Deer will send them to them and then they're going to pay um, they're going to pay to have the tech come out and install them for us. Brock, there's a truck. Yep, there's a short lift. Short lift. Alright, I guess we can go and I can keep moving. Oh, can't. <laughs> well, would you get the ropes everyone talking about? The Yankum ropes? Here's the problem I have with the Yankum ropes, and I get it that people really like them, but I have a big problem with a kinetic energy rope. Um, I don't want my ropes to stretch because that introduces a huge recoil in shock load to the equipment that you are pulling and pulling with. Let's just say, for example, I bury a tractor or a combine, and I've got a big old Yankum rope, and we hook her up to the biggest tractor we can find, and we start pulling. And whatever stuck doesn't move, it doesn't come. And we stretch that rope all the way out, and it doesn't move. Then what happens? We're gonna pull that tractor backwards? That's not good on driveline components. Or are we going to get a slack line and get a running start and try and yank the dang thing out and rip 
rip whatever we're pulling on off, the axle or whatever. I have no interest in that. A big, solid, pull, steady rope that doesn't stretch would interest me. Or a cable. A cable is really what you should have. But, uh, one of our neighbors that does a lot of our tile work, they've got a big rope that used to be a ship's anchor rope. And um, we've used that a couple times for pulling. It's super long. You can double it up. It works pretty good when we really, really need something. But I will give you that our chains are not great. I should probably not be using chains very often. Uh, do you guys use a grain marketing service or just market the grain ourselves? Most of it we just do ourselves. Uh, Phil handles a lot of that. We all talk about it, but Phil's the one that books it and takes care of it. And uh, occasionally, Phil use some kind of a service to, to set some mid-max stuff. But um, most of it is we watch it. We decide when we want to sell, set basis, do all that stuff, and call up our great buyer and tell them to do it. Uh, made a barter at the beginning of this season. Two truckloads of mixture of worm case casting. Wow. Back mono and paralyte and plowed it into a quarter of an acre and it outperformed a one acre field. I was just, yeah, well, there's a lot of fertilizer in that uh, two truckloads of manure there. Uh, do you plant products other than Golden Harvest? Not anymore. We used to. Um, so I had planted some other seed brands in the past. Uh, even after I was making the decisions and selling seed, we still planted half or a quarter of our acres to a different seed brand. It got to be less and less every year. And then the final year, whatever year it was, 2013, 14, something like that, um, I had done, I had done probably five or six side by side split planter where we were every other pass um, was different hybrids, uh, 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 a competitor <laughs> versus a golden harvest, and um, the golden harvest number won five out of the six. The one that it didn't win was just by a couple of bushel. And I don't get paid for selling the other brand. And it was costing us $30 more a bag to start with. So I couldn't justify buying it anymore. And I, I quit then and I, I haven't gone back. Uh, I do have a competitor or two in my plot every year, uh, which I got my bean plot results this back this morning. I'll try and put them in the video at the end of today's actual video, not the live stream, so you guys can see them tomorrow. Uh, there were two competitors in there. The best competitive number was seventh place out of 15 that's right in the middle like I, my products are good so i don't have any reason to plant anything else how was brock's hay after you sprayed it i he bailed it i don't know how much he got off it or how good it was i think it was pretty good because we had a lot of rain thank you for helping feed america videos are awesome thanks for watching you're selling your current house before your new one is done uh we're probably getting ready to think about selling our new our old house in the next month or so my wife has been doing a really good job of getting stuff cleaned up and uh, uh, getting it ready to sell. I've been doing a few little things here and there when I get a chance. Uh, we're still debating whether we're going to hire a realtor or just try and make a Facebook post and a Zillow post and sell it ourselves. Um, the question is, do I think a realtor is going to get me an extra ten to $15,000 over what I can get out of it? And yeah, I don't know that they will, so we'll see. South Africa. Well, oh, I missed one. How are you guys going to try tilling, ripping all of the corn ground? We're not going to rip all of the corn stalks. We're going to get our disc hooked up pretty soon and start disking corn stalks. Um, we're just hoping to finish planting wheat first, which I don't think we're done, but it's getting awfully late, so we'll see. Um, we're going to rip some of the corn stalks, not all of them. We will rip everything that's going to get planted to corn, though, so basically all the beans that aren't getting planted to wheat. Ugh, it's so rough back here. This field will get ripped because of those tile lines that we're bouncing over. All this bouncing that I'm doing is um, tile lines because we tiled this field a year ago after it was wheat last year and all the tile lines have settled and they're rough. And, and yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna chisel this one. Just level it out. Okay. Uh, uh, will you put Copperhead closing wheels on the bean planter this winter and stick with the solid cast ones? I'm probably going to stick with the cast ones, but I'll have to ask Phil. He put a couple of those Copperheads on that planter last spring, 
I don't know that we saw enough or much of a difference to make it worth replacing those and putting new ones on. So I would guess we'll stick with what we got. Darn Brock left before we could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, was knocked out by a kinetic rope. I was pulling one of my lawnmowers out with a tractor. Broke. Thank God I had a helmet on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you have any big pipe repair on the green system this fall? Uh, where the pipe wore through and got thick. Yeah, so uh, we actually called somebody in July about coming out and doing something about that. They patched it up last fall and we'll be fine for this fall, but uh, they're supposed to be coming out and modifying that system so that we don't have that issue again. And we were hoping it would come before harvest. That hasn't happened, now we're using it, so what are you going to do? We're going to have to wait until we're not using it. But yes, that isn't the plans to fix that. How is fertilizer supplier justifying the increase? One other factors of play besides price gouging does it come from offshore? Um, a lot of our fall broadcast fertilizer comes from Canada. The, the pot, uh, phosphorus, um, or no, the potash. Yeah, the potash, maybe both. The nitrogen price increase, it's mostly price gouging. Now, it is tied to natural gas because it's made with natural gas. And so, um, when that price goes up, which I hear natural gas is double, but double 165 is like 320, not 500. So, uh, there's a little bit of both going on there. Uh, good morning from Australia. Just for a brilliant surprise live stream. Always a good day. Yeah, welcome, Steve. Uh, let me know if you need All right, we're going to end this one here real quick. It's been an hour and 15 minutes already. Grain storage capacity. Let's see. Our big bin's 120,000. We've got another one that's 45 and 40 and a 20 and a 12. All attached to the main grain system plus the overhead's 3,000. We've got those three bins out back that are full of wheat. There's a 7, a 7, and a 13,000 bushel there, I think. And then at Berkey, we've got a 20, a uh, 5, a 5, a 7, and a 7, I believe. So you guys can add those up, but that's how much grain storage we have. You notice any differences in fuel usage in the new combine? Not really. Uh, I haven't really compared and analyzed that close yet. Um, but it's the same motor, same machine, same size heads. We're doing the same amount. It shouldn't be any different. How did the manual yield calibration work? Uh, monitor more correct. Yes, it's made it a lot more accurate. Um, when I was doing more calibrations earlier there, yesterday when I did the one, we were off by 28%. When I did it today, it was off by 1.5. So we're much, much closer and should be dialed in a little, a little even better than we were yesterday. I really want to build a green bin house with a spiral staircase that goes up the middle with a greenhouse at the top. There you go. That'd be cool. So, all right, guys. Uh, I'm going to give you a few quick action shots. We'll turn the camera around. You see this view plenty in my regular videos, but we're going to go ahead and, and stop it here pretty quick. This is the field average, what we've done today. Here's what we're doing now, the round here. Uh, show the map. That's what we've combined today. You can see there is some variation, but all really good corn. And uh, there's Brock and the green car tractor. Brock with my. See the delay. Did you get it? Maybe he's not watching anymore. <laughs> Did, are you still watching? I said Brock, wave high. I'm not feeling behind. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in tomorrow's video.